It's been uh, an unrelenting bombardment of change. How do we shift gears, right? How do we change the format? How do we not skip a beat? What can we do to continue to serve people, right, and, and do it well? It was our goal and our challenge to keep them engaged and to keep them visible to others. The staff got into the detail of how to make each family available for care. So they were always thinking, what could we do differently? What could we do better? How can we expand? OK, you need uh, extended Zoom services. You need technology. How do we keep people involved? We never really stopped. We knew that the clients needed us probably more than ever. The folks we serve were at the highest risk for illness and death during all of this. I think one thing I'm proud of is the fact that we kept families engaged. We didn't give up on that. So we made sure that they were visiting, whether it was in person or virtually when appropriate. You're not alone. Someone is, is gonna be there for you. It might not look the same way, where you're coming into the building, sitting with someone face to face, and, and having that type of interaction. Even if we are in a phone call right now, we're here for you. We're gonna do whatever it takes, you know? We're gonna work with you. And in 10 days, we put a group of clinicians, we put a group of social workers, case workers, uh, be there and in a helpline 24-7 uh, if they needed any services, if they needed a phone call. When we pivoted to telehealth, what we found is that many of the families didn't have technology. They had one phone for the family. They didn't have tablets. So we were able to purchase tablets and make sure that they were able to have access to telehealth. I felt like the world looked at COVID as a pause button, and you can't do that in some of these cases. That You can't press pause. You just got to keep going. We knew, and our staff knew, that now more than ever is when we need to be seeing the kids, seeing the families. Very quickly, we decided that we needed to get back into the field. OK, we can't go visit this person in their home. Can we at least have a conversation in the driveway? Can we do these wellness checks? And so what we're learning is you guys send your people to the people. So we dispatched our care coordinators and our peers into the community. We sat outside, took walks, used masks, uh, brought masks with us. Getting up and walking the streets and finding the unhoused and getting them housed and taking kids out on the porch or the parking lot or wherever they could find them to meet with them and to do the work. It's really our staff that showed up each and every day that put aside their own personal struggles, that put aside their own personal fears and worries and everything else. They may have lost a loved one at work. Some have lost a loved one at home. Uh, and they're still showing up. I've seen leaders come in on weekends and on holidays and work overnight shifts. We had staff come from other sites. We had staff work overtime. We had staff work double time at time just to provide support to these kids. And as we started to see the numbers roll in, reality really began to take hold and we began to see the implications, not only in the clients we serve, but in our staff. We saw that people were really struggling. We brought an employee, our employee assistance program to do groups to process everything that people were seeing and feeling. Keep in mind, we're working during a global pandemic, <laughs> worse than we've ever experienced before. So if you're feeling anxious, stressed, depressed, like you're not doing enough, um, understand this is the context. We have been encouraged to make sure that we take care of ourselves, to make sure that we take the time that we need to make sure that we are okay so that we can better serve our community. And that I'll take that forward for the rest of my life. There were organizations across the entire nation, thousands of them, um, that we're all doing the same thing. And although we never talked, I like to think that we were all on the same wavelength. I like to think that we were doing our own things in communities. You know, this conference is an opportunity for us to all come together and not only share our experiences, hopes and dreams for the future, but maybe to kick back and celebrate a little bit because we got this done.